Hello. Uh, I'm going to show you what it's like when we take your leaves and bits of bark out of the kiln. My voice has gone, so you may not be able to hear me very clearly. So, this is my kiln. As you can see, it's a bit rusty and old. When I open it up inside, this is what we see. So, as you can see, there's all your bits of bark in here. It's about uh, cooled down to about 30 or 40 degrees now. So when you're doing your glazing, I asked you to make sure that you had one nice thick layer of glaze over all of your piece of clay. Now, I just want to show you what happens when that doesn't happen. So, as you can see, this piece of bark is covered all the way over with glaze, whereas this one, whoever's painted it, have left some clay gaps. They haven't quite covered it all. And that means that we can see the clay right through the glaze. Sometimes that looks good, Sometimes it looks like you haven't quite finished the job properly. Okay. So this is a layer of uh, rowan leaves, as you can see there uh, on a shelf. And these are the stilts that we use to prop the shelves up to keep them apart from each other. They're still pretty hot. They're absolutely beautiful, don't they? So the kiln's ready to be loaded now and uh, as you can see it's completely empty apart from these which are what we call stilts made of clay with metal spikes in them. So uh, when you've got a glazed object it stops it sticking to the floor of the kiln or anything else. But these are some little pots that I've made. This one's green on the outside and turquoise, turquoise on the outside and green inside. So now my first layer is ready, I can put my kiln shelf on. This one's got horrible bits of glaze on it, I need to clean it off and add some more covering. And now I can start to add pieces of your bark. I need to get on as many as I can because we've made about 300 or 400 pieces of bark. So I've got to make sure I can fit them as cleverly as I can to fit as many in as when one firing as possible. It takes about 12 hours for the kiln to be fired and so I can open it up again and it gets up to about 1060 degrees for this firing. Now I'm ready for the next kiln shelf. This little bit sticking out of the corner of the kiln is a thermometer and it tells the kiln how hot it is in there and uh, how, hot, how much hotter it needs to be still. my last shelf in. I've only got a half shelf now. I think these pieces of bark were made by um, Willow Class. Why have you only got a half shelf? Because a 
model of a house I was making once exploded when it was in the kiln and it cracked the whole shelf through. So I had to throw one bit away and the half shelf is what I'm left with. See if I can find one tiny, tiny bit to put on this side here. Another tiny piece there, and one more around this edge if I can fit it. No, it's not going to stay. But here's my last tiny half shelf, properly cracked. Right, now to fill it up. That's a beautiful piece of bark. That's going to look amazing in its glaze. Right, so now my kiln is loaded. I have to shut the lid. And then I have to turn it on.